It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show on this Thursday morning. Delighted to be in your company. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, here's a question for you. Do you feel that maybe a friend of yours or a partner or a colleague vents all the time without taking your feelings into consideration, perhaps? Uh, well, if that's the case, you may be a victim of what's called emotional dumping. And this is an incredibly common, often addictive pattern of reliving uh, a past emotional experience in the present. And those who find themselves on the receiving end of emotional dumping can find it excessively draining and frustrating. So today, we chat about emotional dumping with life coach and journey practitioner, Ellie Lawrence, as well as registered counselor, Courtney Potto. Great to have you both here with us. And Thank you. Thanks for rising at the crack of dawn to be here. Of course, we'd love to hear about your thoughts and experiences as well at home. So please do feel free to drop us a voice note on 063-408-8863. Ellie, let me start off with you um, just by sketching the difference, right? Because I think there is um, room and space to share your feelings and your experiences with your Absolutely. family and with your friends. But there is a time when that kind of crosses over into what we're talking about, yes. emotional dumping. Absolutely. What is the difference between that? The difference is that we all vent at some stage or other, and mm -hmm. that's a healthy form of expressing your feelings. And um, a venting is also a person that would consider the time span of the discussion. Mm -hmm. They're not victims of their problems. They are just venting an issue that they feel very strongly about emotionally. So they are also open for solutions. And normally their partner, whoever they're talking to, they will listen to their perspective as well and come to some conclusion. Whereas you find on the other side, a person that dumps their emotion, mm -hmm. an emotional dumper, is more of a person that does not consider time or space. You need to be available for them uh, at their request. Mm. They need to open up and express their, their feelings. They are always a victim and blame. Mm. Um, somebody else for their problems. So they're not open to listen to constructive um, solutions. Right. They have their own idea and they are a bit closed to any other solutions. Yeah. And Courtney, I guess in your line of work, in that classic movie image of, you know, a client lying on the couch and you just sitting there <laughs> making notes, you had your fair share of venting and sharing and also, I'm sure, emotional dumping as well. What have you found to be the, the triggering conditions for that kind of overflow and relentless charge of emotions? I think there's a few factors, but some of the things is, you know, someone who's experienced a lot of trauma mm. or negative life experiences, you often have build up of all of these frustrations and anger and you simply just want to offload them because you just want to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. um, someone who maybe doesn't feel safe or stable in their relationships, so maybe they want to offload onto someone that they don't really know because their relationships are at stake, you know. Um, and then someone who's maybe struggling with any sort of substance abuse, you know, mm. alcohol, drugs, they don't know how to process their emotions in a healthy way. And so the only solution for them is to just offload in this unhealthy manner. Yeah. And I guess the first part of what we're trying to work towards, which is a solution for both the person who is emotionally dumping and the other person who's on the receiving end, is in trying to understand those mm. kind of things and the triggering events or the triggering conditions. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about what you can do then to, I guess, provide a safer space and to help that person through their emotional trauma that they might might now unfortunately be dumping onto you, especially if you're feeling quite exasperated as a result of that. But of course, do send us a voice note about your experiences. We'd love to learn from you as well. 063-408-8863. It's my feel good breakfast show. A very good morning to you. Thanks for, again for joining us on this Thursday morning. And we're back with our panel discussing the topic of emotional dumping and the negative effects thereof. And so to that, uh, life coach and journey practitioner Ellie Lawrence, as well as registered counsellor Courtney Potto are here to discuss that topic with us. And of course, we'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Send us your voice notes on 063-408-8863. Before we enter into the next round of our discussion, we do have some comments that came through on social media regarding this. Um, and uh, Crystal said this, Good morning, Expresso team. Um, a very soft heart. I cry until I feel okay. We're talking about coping mechanisms. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and she says that I pray and I find a solution to whatever I'm confronted with and I listen 
to nice and uplifting music and I do sing or dance. We do have another comment coming through. This one from Rishi, I just hit the gym. Simple as that. So maybe for anyone who might identify as an emotional dumper, there's one for you as well. Quick solution. Tandiwe says, good morning, fam. I cry until I feel a little bit better. Uh, then I take a nap. Rest is very important. Spelele says, crying is, crying is best now. And then uh, sharing with others makes you, uh, what is it? Oh, sharing with others makes you a laughing stock, and sometimes you may make a mistake of telling the wrong person. And that's also mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. to consider, yes. isn't it? Yes. Courtney, um, I think a lot of people who are maybe um, emotional dumpers might feel that, you know, ventilating these emotions continuously might help them feel better. But is there a chance and a danger that it could actually aggravate whatever feelings you already hold, those negative feelings? And if so, how do you go about listening or stopping this behavior then? Mm, definitely it can aggravate these feelings because if you think about it, when you are frustrated and venting, you can often heighten these emotions because you get stuck in explaining things from one perspective, which mm -hmm. is your own perspective. And often people who are, you know, offloading in this unhealthy way, they fail to see things from a bigger perspective. And so it keeps you in this unhealthy or angry state. Mm -hmm. And then also as well, when you are offloading in this unhealthy manner, it might make your close circle want to distance themselves from you because mm -hmm. of the emotional baggage you're putting onto them. And so that can also heighten your own emotions of anger and frustration because your you know, support system is almost diminishing. Yes. And then in terms of lessening this behavior, if you do find yourself um, emotionally dumping, then you can always um, use coping mechanisms like a journal. That's mm. always a really great yes. way to offload some of your emotions in a healthy space, which is not at the expense of another person. And then keeping a healthy, healthy lifestyle, exercise, eating well, just making sure that your lifestyle is good to, you know, keep your mental state in a good, on a good level. Mm. And then also just, you know, understanding that your actions have an impact on other people. And so when you do want to vent to someone else, asking them, do you have the capacity? Are you willing to listen to me right now? And then if they say yes, then you can go on and, you know, talk about your problems to them. Absolutely. All right, so Ellie, what are some of the signs that whatever uh, kind of emotional venting you're getting from a friend or a partner or a colleague is really deflating you as a person? You need, you need to really be careful um, about what it is that you are on the receiving end of. So often when you are a partner or a friend of someone that's venting, you'll feel totally drained from all their emotions that they're pouring out on you. It's like a kettle that's, that's steaming mm. because they're just venting all this that they're feeling. And you actually also feel a little bit helpless because you haven't got the answers for them. You can't change their situation. So you feel at also in a negative space because you don't know how to correct it or fix it for them. So those are the difficulties that you experience. And also it's very draining. Mm -hmm. You leave the conversation or that space exhausted and you, you think, please, gosh, not again. Yeah. But you know the person and you probably find that they will repeat it and um, that also dampens the relationship. It's negative for the relationship, whether you're in a relationship or just a friendship. But then ultimately, we also want to be there for our people. Absolutely. And for our as well. So how do, we, how do we do that in a healthy manner, just very succinctly, hold space mm -hmm. and honor that emotional state that they might be in? So just recognize that your actions have an impact on other people. Um, and also, you know, when it comes to emotional dumping, explaining to the person the gravity of the situation that you're going to explain so that mm. it gives them an idea of what's coming and it doesn't right. take them by surprise. And then also just in the general sense of someone else is wanting your support for something, you can ask them, do you want me to just listen and give you empathy or do you want solutions to your problems? Do you mm -hmm. want some advice? And then it shows the person that you really hear them and validate their feelings. Absolutely. Ladies, thank you so much for rising early to join us. A really valuable conversation which I hope has inspired you at home to continue having those healthy conversations with those close to you so that we can all just kind of hold hands together and walk this life journey in a healthy way.